Excellent. Uh, let's talk about uh, media publishing. We have a very interesting panel uh, moderated by uh, Emila Birashid. So please welcome Emil on stage. Uh, welcome on TechCrunch. Hi, Emil. Thank How you. How are you going? Everything OK? Thank you very much. Excellent. I'll let you introduce Thanks. your guest. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, thanks to right, uh, everyone. Well, uh, I'm uh, Emilio Birashid and I'm pleased to be here with you. And I'm actually a journalist and I also created a community of startups, investors and uh, other actors of the uh, ecosystem that is called Startup Business. And uh, today we have two big guests. I have uh, Giorgio Brenna from uh, Leo Burnett, one of the biggest uh, um, advertising agencies in the uh, world. Thanks, Giorgio. Have your seat. <laughs> and uh, Andreas Wille, that uh, is uh, from uh, uh, The Build. And uh, we're going to have uh, this uh, uh, panel about the media, the future of media. And it's quite interesting for me because, um, of course, uh, I'm a journalist. And Andreas told me that he wanted to talk about the future of the journalism. I'm here to uh, learn what uh, I'm going to do uh, in the next uh, years and possibly also months. What with uh, Giorgio, we're going to discuss uh, about the brand engagement uh, in a way that can be interesting also for people that, like you, are uh, doing new companies uh, as called startups. Furthermore, Giorgio will uh, uh, give us also a view of the technological opportunity of creating a new uh, platform uh, in order to uh, spread the contents and the communications uh, using the uh, digital uh, tools. Uh, well, uh, we're going to start with uh, Andreas. Andreas is uh, from Germany. He lives in Berlin, but uh, uh, later on we'll go to Munich because he wants to go to the Oktoberfest with his friend. That is quite a good idea. And um, so, Andreas, tell us what is the future of German journalism meaning uh, from your uh, interesting point of view? Uh, uh, thank you, Emil. First of all, uh, I'm hungry. I want to eat a pizza. Ramon, he really made me uh, want to eat a pizza. I think he did a really great job. And uh, we have a tough act to follow with journalism after D D Domino's Pizza. But I'll try my very best. Uh, I'm with Axel Springer. Axel Springer is a big uh, publishing company uh, that in uh, 2000 and Seven had 23 million revenue from the digital world. We are a 3 billion revenue company, 23 million revenue in 2007. It's actually the first uh, publishing company in Europe where the uh, revenue from digital overtake the revenue from the you know, standard business, right? Yes, and actually, exactly. So two 23 million 2007, 1.3 billion roughly uh, revenue from the digital uh, businesses 2013 so we try to uh, survive in the digital world and uh, but for us you're actually doing well huh? we're doing pretty well yes uh, we have uh, folk we are focusing uh, basically on what used to be in newspapers because if you look at newspapers they used to be a fantastic business they still are by the way but they had all classified businesses all advertising business and all consumer businesses combined in one piece of paper, which was fantastic because in a regional newspaper, you looked for a job, you looked for a car, you looked for an apartment, cinema. you yes. looked for a cinema listing, yeah. Yeah. you looked for your news, fantastic business. That all has gone away because it basically has been taken apart by the internet because you don't need the audience anymore of a newspaper, we all know that, to sell advertising. And so our simple strategy was that we set out uh, really to implement starting 2007 is to say, look, we're going to do exactly what we used to do. Classified advertising, advertising news, but we just do it the internet way by yeah. acquiring and growing. Uh, and that has taken our uh, business uh, to uh, these uh, new heights. But the, biz back, the big new bet that we are undergoing now is that the internet obviously has given news away and all publishers have done that for free. Our big news websites already started in 1997 and they all started on the premise news is for free. We have now started to try to change that. We have started to charge consumers 
for our news content with premium models, with metered models, so you have a certain number of articles for free yeah. and then you need to pay. The jury is still out if we are successful, but we are fundamentally convinced that what has a value can have a price and uh, that uh, we will be able to make that a success because we believe that there is still value to professional journalism, so people Less who are getting sense. actually a salary for putting content together next to all the social content, media content, which is great. And we hope we will be successful in doing that, and I'm happy to explain further. Yeah, well, and uh, um, just tell us, uh, uh, when I go uh, on your website, I want to buy an article. I can buy the single article, or I need to buy a package of things. I mean, once when I bought the uh, you know paper newspaper, I was buying the newspaper, and maybe just ten percent of the things was interesting me. Okay, uh, but uh, in this case, uh, what is changing also the way people can uh, consume the informations, buying uh, just the one they need. Basically, no, it's mostly an all-you-can-eat model. So it's a subscription or membership okay. model uh, like a Spotify uh, where we, because we believe people will not go through the pains to have an interaction for just one article. It's a lot of, it's, I mean, it's uh, the way to subscribe. You need to put down your address. You need to give your credit card and so on. And that is a lot of effort. So we think and uh, uh, we very much uh, therefore uh, iTunes has changed the world. iTunes has made consumer payment much more convenient and much more accepted. Uh, and so a lot of our revenue comes uh, through cooperation with iTunes, but also we have our own uh, online payment system. But it's mostly you subscribe to the full offer of what one brand has to offer, of what a newspaper has to offer, or what a magazine has to offer. Okay. And uh, uh, what is changing in terms of... Uh, the uh, number of uh, potential customers you can reach. I mean, I think that uh, one, uh, uh, when you sell the newspaper, you need to print it in a uh, uh, certain number of copies, distribute it in certain number of places, while uh, online you don't have uh, this problem anymore. So any people in the world can virtually buy uh, the things you publish. And this uh, uh, means that uh, the number of readers of your publication uh, is grow up uh, also from international perspective? Uh, absolutely. First of all, obviously, we are German language speaking, so you reach the German language customers. But yes, there is no more uh, limitation to the number of people. And we have our m brands now reach more people than they ever had in the past. Uh, our newspaper is read by 12 million. Still, the physical newspaper build is read by 12 million people per day. But we also have now 15 million unique visitors per month uh, on our online website and we have maintained a big free area so it's just for our regular customers they then have to subscribe for exclusive content for videos we also acquired for instance the highlight video rights to the german football league the bundesliga which is very valuable content and so which you also get access to if you subscribe so it's opens a lot a lot of new opportunities so you have actually three million uh, customers more compared uh, with a paper. Absolutely, yes. That is makes sense. Yes, we have, uh, and uh, they are obviously now all moving uh, from the stationary uh, internet to the mobile internet. Uh, we can see that, and our aim is basically to follow the uh, consumption of news and advice of uh, of our indi individual customers throughout the day whether they are on their tablet, on their smartphone, on the paper, or at the PC uh, in the office, or in the future in the internet-ready television set, uh, they should be able to have the brand experience of built on all devices. And uh, uh, from uh, the perspective with um, uh, the relationship with journalists working for your company, I mean, uh, they had to change the way they work because they're uh, writing for the web and not for the paper. It was uh, um, a big change in terms of cultural aspects or not? What about your Yes, experience? absolutely. It's a big change. Mm -hmm. And especially now, first of all, there's two big changes. First of all, that they not only write for the paper, but they also write for the internet. But the second big change, which is now just happening, is since we start charging, we can measure exactly which individual article 
convinced a person to subscribe. So if you say, okay, Emil wrote the great article about this conference. Of course I do, And yes. there is thousand people who afterwards decided to subscribe to the news website. So you can exactly see how much financial and economic value an individual article has, uh, which is something for journalists a little bit frightening, but also exciting. So sure. there's this battle is still going on. Some love it, some hate it. But it's a, uh, it's a, a transform transformation that we're undergoing now. And you're going to pay journalists in the same way you did before, or you pay them if they write more, if they write more uh, interesting, let's say, article? No, no, we, we don't pay, uh, pay them by uh, clicks or by subscriptions, because we also think uh, we have to have the right combination of articles that right. sell and articles that give a newspaper or a brand a meaning. I completely and, agree. Uh, so uh, I don't think that uh, uh, journalists should be paid uh, by clicks, uh, at least not the full-time staff. Yeah, because in this way you can keep also their uh, so-called independence in writing more, uh, more strong. I'll be back uh, to you with a few more questions later, but uh, I want to to ask to uh, Giorgio. Um, the mm, you said the brand engagement, uh, it's uh, something that could be, could be good also for the uh, newborn companies. And uh, also that there are big opportunities for once that are developing software in order to help the uh, advertising and content industry to grow up. Can you uh, uh, share those uh, things with us? Yes, thank, 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 thank you for your question, Emil. Uh, big top background, coming from Lebonet, uh, Lebonet is uh, communication uh, advertising agency is the biggest in Italy, is one of the top uh, five yeah. in the globe. And it's actually quite cathartic for me because my father was using to, wor <laughs> to work with Leo Burnett. Yeah, so. we discovered that. Uh, with over a billion revenue in the globe. Uh, so w what's the point of view of uh, someone that is uh, using the media and the technology to engage the people for brands? That's, that is the background. And, uh, and being here for the last two days, it, uh, I, I have to say that it was, it was very exciting because uh, uh, I felt that there is a huge, huge opportunity still there. Um, I explain myself. Uh, one, one, uh, one of uh, the points that is a starting point for the media uh, landscape is this. In Europe, uh, we are still with um, use of media that is dominated by TV, uh, with uh, the web, uh, so-called, is uh, between 10, 20 percent country by country. But this is uh, still the, the media cake. Um, with uh, digital technology that uh, created some uh, hybrid media in some ways, and Andreas was, uh, was explaining exactly this. Um, with these uh, 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 fields, uh, with uh, people behavior on, on using uh, the media and being touched by it. So w what's our job is, is to go and, and try to understand what's the people behaviors and how they, you, know, you, you can reach them in, in a proper way with, uh, with uh, the, the capability to, to understand what you are saying to them and what's the return. So let's imagine uh, uh, a dream uh, for a moment. And, and the dream is uh, to work on KPI and to have a return on investment and not like still is uh, like Henry Ford was saying uh, many years ago that 50% of the investment you don't know uh, who is, uh, who is uh, using, but uh, you know that he's lost. Uh, so let's imagine KPI, let's imagine return on investment, let's imagine for, for a moment uh, uh, an opportunity to, to fill that is uh, a converging platform where you put uh, the web, uh, the broadcasters, and, and the social. Uh, it's uh, Brand new, no, because this is exist already, and the broadcasters are working on that. But, the, but everything is very vertical, and uh, that this is the limit uh, of, uh, of the technology. Everyone is working on a vertical silos on the ideas instead of opening uh, wider to everyone. 
So uh, an agent, a communication agency like us, we would like to have the platform to work on. And this is uh, something that uh, is not still, still there on, in the market. So maybe uh, an idea for startup is this. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's very true. That's uh, for sure is an idea for startups. Let me uh, um, ask you, uh, a platform can be also an open for a platform where different players can play in the same platform. Is that make sense? Uh, I mean, the reason why you said the big groups are doing their own platforms is just because there is nothing else on, on the market or because they want to have their own platform. Broadcasters are starting for their own interest. You know, digital broadcasting, uh, they have already the digital platform that, that is uh, the, the core business. So they start on that. Uh, point is that uh, they are using for their own interest of the marketing. It's not a wider open marketing platform. This is what I'm saying. So, you know, you cannot use the same platform for all the brands because they have the, 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 the data that are profiled for their own interest. So uh, if I imagine to you know, there is a nice uh, sentence that I'm repeating every, every time that is uh, a mass of individuals, a mass of profiled individuals. So in, in, in this sense, you should reach one by one as a mass. So you need a platform to do that. That is a complex one. You need investment. You need a lot of things. You need a lot of capabilities. At the moment, a wider open platform is not there yet because, again, the broadcasters are doing to sell uh, sports, Formula One, uh, cinema, whatever. So they do for their own marketing plans and not for use for others. Okay, so uh, let's suppose we're going to try to develop uh, this uh, so-called open platform. Okay, uh, which, which are the first uh, uh, um, uh, stakeholders we need to reach? The users or the providers? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, you know, the final target is are are, are the users. You know, uh, consumer are the king. People are the king. The content is the currency. So, this is the paradigm we have to work on. Uh, don't forget that in the middle. You have a lot of uh, companies that are working on, so you cannot avoid that. So you have to build up something that are the final targets, the, con the people, the consumers, but uh, working with all the operators that are in the market and in the fields to reach this kind of target. It's, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite a challenging field. Huh? Well, this concept of the content yeah. is the currency, it's quite uh, interesting. I okay. just wanted to add something because you're, most of you are startups and obviously you want to d disrupt existing businesses. I think, and we are, as a publisher witness this right now, and I think the broadcasters, the consumer will take care of it because obviously linear television uh, consumption will go down radically. Uh, and uh, t I think... Uh, broadcasters have not quite noticed this yet, especially also because a lot of uh, advertising still goes down this way. But uh, for uh, younger generations, but for all of us who have gotten used to nonlinear television watching, we perhaps used, use the TV for linear watching still for sports events, live events or elections, but never for TV series, never for movies rarely for shows, and so the consumer will totally disintegrate like they did it with the music industry, like they did it with the publishing industry, and like which a lot of other industries will happen, and then there will be totally different ways to reach consumers. So I think the next five to ten years we will see a disintegration of uh, the traditional broadcasting model. Yeah, this is, uh, can be applied also to the newspaper, even the newspaper is a linear uh, media, so that is changing also also in the newspaper. So I, I think, I mean, I wonder uh, uh, how many of you bought a paper, newspaper in the last few days. I don't think you won't raise your hands if you bought a newspaper recently, but uh, I don't see any hands. Yeah, so but I, I, there's a different point. You're absolutely huh? right with regards to the physical newspaper, but a, a newspaper, the brand of a newspaper no. has a much bigger meaning than the brand of a TV broadcaster. 
you do not watch Rai or BBC, perhaps BBC is an exception, you watch, watch an individual program, you watch this show, right. while you read a newspaper. Right. And so this power That's of this brand can be taken digital without any problems. We, our, the direct traffic of our brand is over 70%. So people type in the URL of our newspaper because they want to read our newspaper or the content online. So I think this is a fundamental difference and a fundamental So the reputation of the source is still big when it's a matter of a newspaper, while on, on a TV uh, channel, uh, things completely different because people is looking for the specific content uh, already with a linear, on the linear media. That's, that's makes sense. That is exactly, Andreas was uh, making a wonderful point. The generalist, it's, it's not going anywhere. You know, you have to build up uh, uh, all the specialities uh, in a platform. So that is the key point because, you know, uh, everything is now, you, you know, you, you, you do your own uh, uh, palincesto. And, and that is uh, what you have to do, you know, multi-screen devices. You have, uh, you have uh, probably four or five uh, screens to, to walk on, maybe at the same time. And uh, it's, not, it's, not it's not TV anymore. It's uh, something that you, you get from a video. Uh, most so of the Different people, sources simultaneously. Exactly. Most of the people outside this room, uh, that is, I mean, the mass, you know, uh, when you, you are talking about uh, a screen, have in mind TV mostly, no? but it's not TV anymore, it's a screen. And screen you, you can use uh, in, in every way. That's why you need something in the back that uh, is uh, giving the engine to reach the people in a proper way. Yeah, because you're saying uh, a mass of individuals, but individuals and each one wants something different. Uh, that, that's exactly the point. That, that takes that's exactly the point. The point. Which are the contents that are most about on, on your website? Uh, interestingly enough, uh, it is the variety, relatively the same variety that we see attracts people also in the printed version and built as a tabloid newspaper. So you have from politics to sports to celebrities to entertainment, you have all of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then it is also the same mix that attracts people to uh, buy us or to subscribe online. So the all-you-can-eat formula, it's uh, a various menu, people cherry-picking things from different parts of, uh, of, uh, of the content, you know, from news to yeah, politics. Absolutely, to once they subscribe, they can have, they have access to, uh, to everything. Yeah, but it, you didn't, uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, um, uh, a good mix of different type of contents that people yes. gonna to read. Yes, and with all, uh, there's also one one point which is very important. I think yes, people want to have individual content. They all want to make their own choices. Mm -hmm. But I also still very much believe that people also want to be guided by trusted brands, and these brands can be very old traditional media brands. They can be very new brands. They can be individual bloggers. They can be their friends on Facebook. But the choice is getting bigger, mm. and the algorithm cannot take care, the Google algorithm cannot take care of everything. Mm. Uh, and we see that, that uh, people, no matter what age, also want to have points of reference. And right. uh, I think this is one of the potential strengths of an old media brand to stay relevant, but therefore we need to embrace all forms of digitization. The value of, of the reputation, you know. And, uh, well, I, uh, I think we have time for, for uh, one last question. Is, uh, I bet, that of course, your website is open to comment and needs uh, interactions from uh, readers and users that can suggest uh, and uh, comment things. How this is changing the way you produce your content and you sell your content? Oh, it's fantastic because we en uh, gauge readers to send us to contribute material. And uh, so we have, uh, they, we get reader submissions for photos from all over the world. And I mean, in pa tabloid newspaper it talks a lot about celebrities. We cannot, the celebrities hate it, but now every reader is also a photographer and send us pictures and they are much more happy, the average reader, 
to see it published on our brand, on our uh, branded news website, than to just put it up themselves on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of material, it's a lot of discussion also. We have monitored so far, we monitor, pre monitor so far our panel, our, our uh, community discussions. We are discu debating if we should change that into a post monitoring system. So they want to be paparazzi, have a place to go now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, last question also for um, Giorgio. Uh, at the beginning of your speech, you said uh, we have a, a sort of hybrid uh, media, but it's hybrid because uh, uh, it's now and uh, we're going to be something else because it's uh, in an evolution phase or will be hybrid uh, for a long time. I guess uh, the, 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 the it, will be, it will be even more hybrid going on and on and on because uh, that it is uh, the destiny of uh, the classical things. Um, so that is uh, that is uh, quite uh, obvious for me. I want to underline one point that Andrea said now. That is uh, uh, the fact that uh, the people want to 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 be guided for someone, and uh, the someone is uh, the brand, and the brand uh, with the reputation. And this is absolutely. The, the, the close of the circle of what uh, we were saying today, I guess, yeah. because, uh, you know, every, everything uh, should be done by communication and marketing standpoint is to build up the credibility and the reputation of the brand. So if you do that in every field, uh, that is uh, exactly the value of, mm -hmm. and that uh, is not true that uh, technology yeah. is killing uh, the classicals. I completely <laughs> agree. I mean, uh, it's true that the brand of the paper uh, is still important, but on the internet also the single brand of the single journalist, I mean, your own name brand, it's getting more and more important. It's one of the big changes of the things, you know, because when you publish your own things, so you, uh, exactly. it's one of the things I, I was experiencing in my own uh, uh, um, working life. Well, timer is complete, as the screen them said. Thanks uh, uh, to be with us. Thanks to you to have time for us. And uh, let's see what's happened next on the media landscape. Thank you very much. Thank thanks. You so much. Thanks, Th Mark. thanks, Emil. And thank uh, you. Andres, you have to catch a flight. Okay. Giorgio, thank you so much.